Let's talk about focus. Focus is a tricky conversation in the behavior change space because a lot of people want to focus better and because there are a lot of factors that play in to whether we're focusing well or not, including factors like neurodivergence and ADHD. I'm not gonna speak to either of those in this video simply because I am not an expert in those subjects and so it doesn't make any sense for someone who doesn't have expertise to give you advice on those particular things. However, I will tell you that my name is Dr. Karn Nardine and I have a PhD level expertise in behavior change, which means that my knowledge is all centered around how we change the actions we do in our day-to-day -day lives, and focus is a big part of that. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about three things you need to know in order to focus better. The first thing you need to know is that focus is not a skill. A lot of people think they need to get better at focusing. And while there is a certain amount of growth that you can have there, it probably is more empowering to you to think about focus as a product of certain conditions. I like to think about focus as similar to temperature. Whether I feel hot or cold is more dependent on what's going on around me than my willpower or discipline. This is the same thing with focus. I can't just try harder in order to focus better. I have to change the conditions around me in order to put my body in a state where it can focus better. And so that is the first mindset shift you're gonna wanna make if you want to improve your focus. I want you to actually start paying attention to the external factors that make focusing easier or less easy for you. In order to do that, you can conduct a focus audit. I'm gonna teach you exactly how to do it and I want you to do it right now in the comments. First, I want you to identify one time in your life, preferably in the last two years, where you have focused extremely well. I want you to think of a moment where you've been in complete flow and you've lost hours of time because you were so immersed in what you're doing. I want you to identify that time. Then I want you to audit the environment. What was around you? What could you see and hear and smell? Did you have headphones on? What level of stimulation was around you? What was happening in your actual work task? Was it a small task or a big task? What were you actually working on? I want you to write a description, again, in the comments, of what was happening when you were in that extremely focused state. Then you're gonna move to question number three, which is what can you learn from that? For example, I can remember one of the times that I've been most focused in my life was when I was writing my master's degree thesis. I remember that I would go to a Panera every morning. I would get there by like nine o'clock. I would drink a coffee, I would put in my headphones, and then I would bang away at my thesis. I had a whole week blocked off with no nothing else that was going on, and that was my only job. What I can learn from that experience is that number one, Having a novel environment somewhere new, like a coffee shop or a different workspace is really helpful for me. Two, having an appropriate level of stimulation, so using deep focus playlists, is really helpful in creating the condition of focus. And number three, I need to have a crystal clear idea of exactly what I'm working on. When I was doing that thesis, I would set mini goals for every single hour of work, and that kept me driven. And so if I take these three principles that work for me, those might not be the same thing for you, but if I take those three principles and I apply them to my work style now, I can create the conditions by which my brain focuses. Therefore, I can have more focus within my life. So we just covered two of the points. Number one, recognize that focus is a condition, not a skill. And number two, do a focus audit. The third thing I wanna remind you is to set realistic expectations for how much focus you can achieve in a day. A lot of people expect themselves to focus for eight hours straight because that's the traditional American work week or work day. What I wanna remind you is that eight hour work day was crafted when people, workers, were mostly doing physical labor in factories. Can you do something in a factory for eight hours straight? Yes, but when the majority of the American workplace switched and was actually more about intellectual work, we somehow kept the expectation that an eight hour workday is realistic. And in fact, it's not. I want you to ask yourself, would you expect to be able to hold a dumbbell above your head, a heavy dumbbell above your head for eight hours straight? No, you absolutely would not. 
But what if you held a dumbbell for 30 minutes and then you were able to put it down for a while and then you held it another 30 minutes and then you put it down. You would probably get a lot longer out of that dumbbell holding if you took the breaks in between. So be realistic with your focus expectations. This is gonna be real talk for a minute. This is especially true for those of you who are studying for exams in a university setting, doing your PhD, et cetera, et cetera. Trust me, I have been there. I know there is a lot of work to do, but you working past your brain's capacity actually just makes your work take longer. You are more likely to have errors. You are retaining less information. And if you were to actually work a realistic amount, if you were to actually take a break and serve your body and go for a walk or eat some food, your actual output will be so high of a quality that it will be absolutely worth the break you took. There's a culture specifically in academia that's like, you need to work 10 hour days, but 10 hour days, 100% honesty with you, are not actually helping you get that thing done. If you switch to simply like a six hour or an eight hour day, try it out just for a week and let me know if that helps. Because I promise when you become more efficient, when you have a better quality of work, A, that work is gonna be more enjoyable, and B, it's gonna get done in a way, way, way faster way. Way, way, way faster way. Look at me with the words. So just a reminder, number one, focus and flow is a state. It is not something that you can create with your willpower. Number two, you need to do a focus audit and focus, focus on what works for you. That's a pun. <laughs> number two, you need to do a focus audit and think about what works for you. And number three, you need to have realistic expectations. I will leave you with this. Inside of our Change Academy membership, we are often talking to clients and members about their focus. And one of the things that I consistently tell them is create a schedule that is aimed at producing quality of work rather than quantity of work and watch how your life and productivity transforms after that. If that hit you hard, make sure you hit subscribe so that you get these videos every single Monday. And PS, if you're having trouble scheduling focus time into your day, make sure to watch my previous video on how to create a routine that will change your life. This video is gonna give you tangible tips that are gonna help you create that condition more often. Thus, making that productivity that you're going for so much easier. I'll see you next week.